Hi, I'm Creston, and I'm going to show you how to securely set up Ubuntu 14.04 server. We're going to be using this for our application deployment. So first, let me go over a few assumptions. So this tutorial is going to cover um, a single server deployment on Ubuntu 14.04 server. That is the LTS version. The other assumption is that this is going to be the first part in a series where I'm actually going to be showing a full uh, Ruby on Rails uh, server deployment. And this, so the stack we're going to be using is Ruby on Rails, Nginx for the web server, Unicorn for the Ruby application server, and Postgres SQL for the database server. And lastly, I am going to be using Capistrano 3 for deployment. But this particular video is focused just on securing your server to be used for any of the roles that you decide for it to use. So we're going to be following seven steps to securing Ubuntu. So first, we want to use the public key that we created earlier for provisioning servers. We don't want to rely on a hosting provider emailing us a root password. Secondly, we want to patch the system. So as soon as you get it up, ideally you'd want to patch the system so you know it's in a secure state. The next step is to create a new user and enable sudo because we don't want to install and do anything using the root account. We want to set up public key authentication to be able to connect to the server using this new user. Because of that, we want to disable password authentication via SSH. In addition, we also want to disable root access from connecting via SSH. And lastly, we want to set up a firewall. Um, there are a number of ways you can secure your server, um, but having a host-based firewall is something you should do for all of your servers. All right, let's get started. The first thing we want to do is add our public SSH key to DigitalOcean. This will enable us to connect to servers without having to use a password. So it's a lot more secure than then emailing the root password to us. So we're going to go to SSH keys once you've logged into DigitalOcean. And you can use any other provider like Rackspace or Linode. So I'm going to add an SSH key. I'm then going to go back to the command line and I'm going to print out the contents of my public key. And then I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll paste it in this area here. And then I'm going to give it a name uh, temp and go ahead and create it. Okay, so now that this new key is created, I'm going to create an instance uh, using it. So click on Create. I'm going to give my instance a name. I'm going to choose the one gigabyte memory instance. But I'm going to select 14.04 64-bit for the server instance that we're going to use. And I'm going to choose my temp key to add. And create droplet, they call their inst instances droplets. So just click on this and it should start creating it. I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while it gets created. OK, my instance has been created. Now I'm going to go ahead and use the IP address and try to connect to that instance. So to do that, I'm going ahead and connect by SSH using root and specifying the IP address that they gave me. So when I try connecting, it's going to tell me um, the authenticity of this host can't be established. That is because I haven't connected before. So I'm going ahead and going to go ahead and type yes. Then it's going to ask me for my private key password because I haven't entered it before. And now it's successfully connected. 
Now for DigitalOcean, they have indicated that there's no root password set, which is ideal. That's what we want when you're using public key authentication. Otherwise, I would set it to uh, a complex password just using um, password. But since it's not set, we're not going to worry about it right now. The next step is to patch the system. Now, typically, you'll see people using apt-get to install software or to update packages. I tend to use aptitude because it has a few more features that I prefer. So I'm going to use aptitude and just call update. This is going to up, look for updates for installed software on the system. Okay, it's so you can see that there's some updates that are available. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a SAPE upgrade. That will upgrade any of the packages that need to be updated. I'm going to go ahead and say yes. And I'll go ahead and pause the video while this is installing. Okay, those packages have been updated. Now, the next step is we want to add a user that we're going to use on a regular basis. And I'm going to add the user uh, Creston. So the first thing it wants to know is a password. So I'm going to go ahead and give it one. And then it'll ask me some other information. I'm just going to hit return to uh, put in defaults, which is blank. Okay, now that that user's been created, I want to actually add it to the suited group. So to do that, I'm going to uh, modify the user, user mod, and I'm going to add the group sudo to the user Creston. Okay, so now that's done, a lot of times for the software installations that you do, you're going to, it will require a reboot of the system. So I'm going to go ahead and do a sudo reboot at this point. And then I'll pause the video while the system reboots. Okay, the system is rebooted, and I can tell that by just pinging the IP address. Um, so it, if it's responding, it should be ready to accept new connections. So, but before I'm going to connect, I'm actually going to copy my public key that I've been using to my Creston user to be able to connect as Creston. So to do that, I'm going to use this command, ssh copy id. Now I'm on my local system. I'm not connected to my server at this point. So basically I'm going to, it's going to identify my public key and it's going to copy it uh, to this location. Now, I'm not specifying root, but I'm leaving it blank, and it's going to assume that the user is called Creston on my system. If you named your user differently in your server, you're going to have to specify what that username is here. So, for example, if, you, if your username was Fred, you'd have to put that username here. Okay, so it's prompted me from the password that I entered before. I'm going to go ahead and enter that. And now it should have copied up that public key. So now I should be able to SSH using just the IP address, and it will assume it's connecting to the Creston user. And, I, and if I hit enter, I don't have to enter a password because now I'm using public key authentication to connect to the server. And you can see I'm connected as the user Creston to the machine host name temp. So the next thing we want to do is we want to alter the SSH server's configuration or the SSH daemon's configuration. So to do that, I'm going to use an editor called Nano. You could use uh, the VI editor or any other editor you choose, um, but I'm going to use the 
nano editor and I'm going to edit this configuration file that's located here. Because I'm using sudo I now have to enter my password. So we're going to look through this file and we're going to change um, four options. So the first option I'm going to use control V, it's control W to do a search and I'm going to look for permit root. So right now it has permit root login yes and we want to disable that and say no. The next option that we want to change because we don't want root to be able to connect up to our server at, as a root. The next option we want to change is password auth. So right now the password authentication is set to yes and it's commented out. So I'm going to delete that comment out and I'm going to say password authentication no because we do not want to allow people to connect to our server just using a password. The next setting I want to change is the X11 forwarding. And since it's a server and we're just using the command line, I usually like to disable this. And lastly, at the very end of the file, I tend to add an allow users command. And I'm going to say that Creston can connect. And I'm also going to add a deploy user that you'll find out more about later. But since we're here, I'm just going to go ahead and add that right now. Now, once I've added that, I'm just going to do Control-O to write out the changes and then control X to exit. So that now that those changes have been made, I need to have the SSH daemon reload its configuration. To do that, I'm going to do sudo service. So I'm specifying a service, the SSH service, I want to reload it. That's going to reload the configuration. Okay, now that that reconfiguration is done, the next step we want to do is configure the firewall. So I'm not going to use IP tables directly. I'm actually going to use uncomplicated firewall or UWF to do the firewall configuration. So the first thing I want to do is do a sudo uh, UFW turn on logging. The next, next step I want to do is I want to allow SSH. Now there are certain names that UFW recognizes that it knows what port to allow open for that particular communication. So SSH is port 22, but it knows how to handle that. So I'm going to allow connections through that. I'm also going to allow www. You can allow HTTPS instead or in addition to www if you wanted to. I'm not going to be using that for this tutorial, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, but I am going to now set unprotected firewall to be enabled. It's going to give you a warning that it may disconnect, disrupt connections. So I'm going to say yes, and it should be active and enabled. And to check it, you can do a status. And you can see, okay, port 22 and port 80 are open. So this is for uh, www and this is for SSH. And then the, this relates to IP version 6, these last two lines. So now at this stage, I usually like to exit from the server and confirm that I cannot connect with root. So if I try to connect with root, it's going to say I'm denied because we disabled it, and but I should still be able to connect as Creston, and I can. Okay, those are the steps to securely set up Ubuntu 14.04 server for application deployment. This is the first video of a series we're doing and the next two are going to be covering a Ruby on Rails application deployment using Postgres, Ubuntu, and Unicorn. 
To get copies of the commands that we use, please visit rubytreesoftware.com and look under the Courses section. Please subscribe or join our email list to learn more as we continue to release these videos. Thanks.